There is a vault of almost limitless energy hidden beneath our feet, one that could power the entire world and reshape the global economy. We've known about it for about 100 years, but there's always been one massive problem. We've only ever been able to tap it in very few specific hotspots on Earth, like Iceland or California. For the rest of the world, this incredible power source might as well be sci-fi from another planet. But one startup claims to have found the key to unlock geothermal energy across up to 50 to 60% of the Earth's surface. How does that technology work and what makes it different from traditional and even enhanced geothermal energy? And is this the real deal? Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is brought to you by E-Rain GV. We've covered geothermal on this channel before. So for long-term viewers, you know the basic premise. And if you're new, don't worry, we'll link the entire playlist here down below. The short version is this. The Earth holds a staggering amount of heat. Scientists estimate that just the top 20,000 feet, or about six kilometers, of the Earth's crust contains over 2,000 zeta joules of thermal energy. It's a number so large it's hard to comprehend, but it's enough energy to power our entire global civilization for over 15,000 years, making it an almost limitless alternative energy source. Yet despite this massive potential, geothermal has always been a giant sitting on the sidelines. In the US, geothermal accounts for less than half a percent of total electricity generation. So the obvious question is, why is that? Why aren't we just using geothermal? Especially when we consider that wind and solar, as amazing as they are, have that intermittency problem. They don't work when the sun isn't shining or when the wind isn't blowing. Geothermal does. It is the ultimate 24 seven clean energy based power source, the holy grail. So why are we blanketing the planet with solar panels and wind turbines and not geothermal power plants? For a century, the reason has been the need for a unicorn geology. Geothermal only works on a rare combination of heat, water, and permeable rock all in one place, giving traditional technologies access to only about 2% of the world's surface. That plus immense drilling costs has kept geothermal chained down. Until now. We spoke with a startup called Sage Geosystems, which literally cracked the code. So what are they doing differently? In short, they're not just looking for heat, they're unlocking the power of pressure. They call it pressure geothermal. Their approach is so effective because they aren't a geothermal company that learned how to drill. They're drilling experts from the oil and gas industry who are revolutionizing geothermal. Kind of the other way around. Instead of searching for natural hot springs, Sage drills down to hot dry rock, the kind that exists almost everywhere. And then they use a technique called gravity fracking. This isn't the chemical laden process you might be thinking of. They use only water and crushed rock to create a single large fracture network deep underground. For smaller projects, they can re-enter one of the millions of abandoned oil and gas wells, saving up to 25% on project costs. For larger utility scale projects, they leverage a page right out of the Texas oil fields. Multi-well pads. A single walking rig can drill 18 to 20 wells in one location. Then they circulate fluid down one well through the hot fractures and up an adjacent one. By cycling which wells are injected and which are producing, they manage heat and pressure, creating a constant 50 megawatt output, enough for 35,000 homes from a single pad, with a target cost of just 6.5 cents per kilowatt hour. But getting the heat to the surface is only half the battle. To turn it into electricity efficiently, Sage has reinvented the turbine. It's not a steam turbine, and it's not even a standard organic Rankine cycle turbine used in other geothermal plants. It's a supercritical CO2 turbine, and it is a marvel of engineering. So we have built a supercritical CO2 turbine. Our turbine wheel is about seven inches in diameter, and it can't be machined. It had to be 3D printed. but. The, the more exciting part is that it uses a different thermodynamic cycle. And so you actually get more, more electricity per unit heat that you put through the turbine. This is where Sage's concept of pressure geothermal becomes truly game changing. They can use the same wells, not just for power generation, but for large scale energy storage. It's amazing how innovation can solve the world's big problems. As of July, my entire house, office, and two EVs are 100% off grid, thanks to our solar and batteries. It's an amazing time to be alive, and it's an amazing time for tires. And if you drive an EV, you have to check out our sponsor this week, E-Range EV, and their amazing line of tires. At its core, what makes E-Range EV special is their Eco Point 3 technology, where rubber filler and compound agents are mixed fully and uniformly under continuous liquid phase conditions, resulting in a more consistent compound. And the results? 
Well, I just did a family trip to Julian, a beautiful mountain town near San Diego, and we recorded a three decibel drop in road noise compared to stock tires. And when it comes to range, their rolling resistance also netted us a 15 watt hour per mile reduction in energy usage, meaning that we can go 15 miles further per full charge. These tires are built to handle the instant torque that makes EVs so fun to drive. An extra weight from the battery pack? No problem. Your range EV has increased load-bearing capacity and reinforced sidewalls, so you get crisp handling without compromising comfort. Plus, they last longer than traditional tires, thanks to that Eco.3 technology I mentioned. They come with up to 50,000-mile warranty coverage and a two-year no-charge road hazard replacement program. We've had these tires on our Model Y for a full year now. We've gone 15,000 miles, done two tire rotations, and so far, they're on track to exceed 50,000 miles. E-Range EV has even partnered with 4Ocean, so every tire sold removes two pounds of plastic waste from our oceans. So you're not just getting an amazing set of tires, you're helping clean the oceans as well. Whether you're cruising down Sunrise Highway or taking that weekend trip to Julian, these tires deliver. They perform brilliantly on wet roads, dry pavement, and everything in between. Available in 37 sizes from 15 to 22 inch rims, they have a tire for virtually every EV out there. Check them out at erangetires.com to find a dealer near you and see why they should be at the top of your list for your next set of tires. Huge thanks to E-Range EV and you. Now back to the show. The concept is brilliantly simple. They take cheap electricity from solar or wind when it's abundant and use it to pump water into a deep fracture. So imagine pumping water into a fracture and then you're kind of inflating it like your lungs, right? And so then you can hold that water under pressure, which is energy. And when you want to then produce it, you open the valve at surface, that fracture wants to naturally close. And when it does, it jettisons the water to surface and you've got energy storage it's a mechanical energy storage because it's using the pressure energy in terms of duration earth store can store up to two to 18 hours of runtime compared to usually about half an hour to four hours for lithium ion and in terms of cost it cannot be beat at around four cents per kilowatt hour in terms of reaction time how quickly it can ramp up to scale it does take longer under a minute compared to milliseconds for lithium ion and in terms of resources needed all you need is water and steel compared to lithium iron phosphate or whatever chemistry materials are needed for the battery now i can imagine what some of you are thinking and i am too Fracking is kind of a dirty word. Are there risk of earthquakes and what else could happen? And I had the same thought. So I asked Cindy about that. We use something called gravity fracking. So we're using a high dense fluid, but it's made up of water, basically crushed rock to make the water more dense or more heavy. So it's pretty natural stuff. You know, one thing people are worried about is inducing earthquakes. And the way that we frack, we actually want to avoid natural fractures, which if you pump water or any kind of fluid past a natural fracture, you can tend to lubricate it, make it slip. And so the fact that we're avoiding natural fractures means that, you know, there's going to be a very low risk to creating earthquakes. So I would say that the environmental impact is very low. Then, of course, when we're generating power, we don't, you know, we have essentially near zero emissions because we're not using any kind of um, hydrocarbons or, or you know coal or gas or anything to burn. But that raises an even bigger question. If this technology is successful and we start tapping into the Earth's heat globally, could we accidentally cool down the Earth's core? The short answer is no, and the reason is about scale. First, that 20,000 feet we're drilling into is a tiny fraction of our planet's size. The Earth's crust alone is 100,000 feet thick, and we're not even scratching the mantle. Second, and this is the crucial part, the Earth is already losing heat all on its own all the time. It constantly radiates heat out into space at a rate of 47 terawatts. Over a year, that's about 412,000 terawatt hours of energy that our planet loses naturally. The entire world's electricity consumption in 2024 alone was just 31,000 terawatt hours. So even if we were to power our entire civilization with geothermal, we'd only be increasing the Earth's natural cooling rate by less than 8%. So while challenges remain, from securing funding through the Valley of Death to streamlining grid connections and dealing with supply chain issues from the fact that there just aren't many companies that make the kind of hardware needed for turbines for geothermal power plants, the path forward is still clear. This isn't just about another clean energy source. It's about a 24-7 power source that can be built almost anywhere 
using the skills and equipment of an entire industrial sector ready for a new mission. Cindy had a really good insight, a massive what if that reframes the entire energy debate. If you took all of the oil and gas capabilities today and turned that entire industrial might toward geothermal, by 2050, you could supply nearly 80% of all the electricity the world needs. I feel we are where wind and solar were 10 or 15 years ago. You know, I think back to when solar first started and, and you know, I, I think everybody thought, well, that's never going to be utility scale. But look at it now, it's utility scale. And so I think as an industry, if we can crack the nut on the cost, get the cost down, we're going to be at scale in the next five to 10 years. Geothermal has always held the promise to be the next clean energy generation technology, but it's always suffered from the fact that it only works in so few places, like we mentioned, 2% of all the areas on Earth. And now with what Sage is working on, if we can unlock 50 to 60%, it could be a complete game changer. But it's not just about availability. The biggest benefit of fossil fuels has always been controllability. In a natural gas peaker power plant, you can dial up or down the energy generation, just add more natural gas into the combustion or less. That is a grid operator's best friend because energy demand is hard to predict. And this is where wind and solar have always fell short and need supplementary battery supplies as well. This kind of tackles both things. And remember, as much as we're trying to clean up the grid, we're seeing the next frontier of AI. Just today, how many times have you used ChatGPT to ask a question? Well, that uses significantly more power than a Google search did five years ago. And this is just the beginning. We're going to be using AI for more and more things, and more companies will be building AI data centers. And the demand for electricity is going to skyrocket. That's precisely why tech companies in Silicon Valley are investing in nuclear and other base power generation solutions, because they need their queries and their AI to run 24-7, not just during the day or windy conditions. And geothermal could absolutely be a game changer on this front. Let's hope that in the next five or six years, this becomes commercialized and widely available. If you want to see a video of us going on site with Sage, meeting the team and showing you the technology up close and personal, sound off below. And generally, what do you think? And until next week, check out this video that we think you're going to love. I'm Rico Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.